Hello everyone, this is G and I'm back with another video. I hope everybody's well. I've been having a rough few days. I've been really tired, really out of sorts. And of course, New York City, this is what, a little after 3.30 here in New York City, 3.30 in the afternoon. So naturally, there's got to be people playing music out my window while I try to get a video done. One moment, please. Hello, I'm back. I had to close the window because, of course, you know, I'm trying to not pass out. Excuse me. This is a crazy afternoon. So anyways, I was saying, I hope everybody's doing well. I am slowly losing my mind. And I think it shows in my face. But uh, anyway, I wanted to just do a brief off-the-cuff reaction video. Uh, about Sean Gordon Murphy. Now, I just heard on DNC's, well, sorry, Comics Matter, formerly Diversity in Comics, uh, still Richard Meyer, or Richard Mayer, I haven't said his name. Right, but on the Comics Matter channel, Zach, Rich, whatever you want to call him, uh, was talking about Sean Gordon Murphy leaving Twitter. And I checked the body of the comics article, checked his Twitter account, and yes, um, in a few hours, it seems Sean Gordon Murphy does plan to. Uh, terminate his Twitter, at least for now, right? Plenty of people say they're going to get rid of their Twitter and, you know, they just deactivate it or, or they don't log in for a bit. So we'll see how long this lasts and, and just how, I guess, firm a commitment this is. But I just want to talk about the idea of Sean leaving Twitter. Now, here's the thing, and I want to say, Bounding Into Comics did, a, I, I think, an amazing job and it made an amazing write-up on this article. Now, I want to be clear, Sean's social media is his social media. According to his Twitter, he's he spoke with his family and he's leaving Twitter for a variety of reasons, right? He has to protect the brand and the product that he's made and uh, all this other stuff and that, you know, if you want updates about his work, you can follow his assistant, all this stuff, right? There's an article about it. I'll, I'll link to his Twitter page for as long as it exists. Right? So, it's his social media. He can manage it how he likes. One of the things I do like about Sean Gordon Murphy is that he presents himself very professionally, right? He doesn't too often get caught up in the comics gate versus the prose drama. It seems that he just tries to be very neutral. Um, and he seems like a good dude, right? If you look at his Twitter, first and foremost, he's just promoting his work. So, I've always liked that about him. And if he wants to shut down his Twitter, well, that's his right. Especially if he's consulted with his family and they feel that maybe for their own personal comfort, right, or their safety or whatever, that is the best thing to uh, do. So if he wants to shut down his Twitter for, whatever, for however long that is, that is totally up to him, his right. I'm not going to tell him how to run his social media. And besides, he's just going to Insta anyway. But here's my concern, I guess. And here's like like the crux of the issue I have with Sean Gordon Murphy. He can say all he wants that he's that he's consulted with his family and that um, he's leaving Twitter and, and um, all this stuff, right? Here's the way I see it. Sean's biggest flaw that I can see, at least from what I've seen of him and know of him, as a human being, is that he will not defend himself. He will not speak up and defend himself or his work or his statements or positions or anything. He made a perfectly reasonable statement about the protest um, last month. Let me look it up here. Uh, I'm on the Bounding Into Comics article. One second. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Ah. So he made a comment June 2nd, right? So so this was at the height of the George Floyd protest, right? Everybody was making videos and making statements, right? So Sean at that time wrote, I want equality. I want more good cops and I want bad cops to be held accountable when they break the law. I want people to be allowed to protest peacefully and I want the looting to end. The solution to these problems isn't more crime. Sounds perfectly reasonable, right? Yet, he received condemnation for this, he received criticism, people telling him 
that there are no good cops, people telling him that he should support, that he should voice support for BLM and all this other stuff, right? And then, of course, he went on to make a statement about um, the, I don't think this is necessarily BLM, the organization, but the statement, right, Black Lives Matter, saying that it's important to him. And, and then um, talking about, you know, hearing of friends' comic shops being, being um, broken into and then, you know, uh, linking to his, to his eBay charity. And there's several things, right? I think um, Tess Fowler um, accused him of, or rather criticized him, I should say. It wasn't an accusation. But he had done some covers for a Doug Tenable comic. I think it's called Bigfoot Bill. And then Tess Fowler uh, got upset with him. And then he pulled the cover saying that he had, it had been brought to his attention that, uh, that, that the creator, who we now know was, was Doug, Doug Tenable, I posted opinions that were anti-LGBTQ, right? And there's several, again, um, Donnie in the Comics did, did a great job looking up these tweets and showing how Sean is repeatedly um, criticized, in my opinion, harassed, honestly, but how he's roundly criticized for perfectly same things, right? Working with, with other creators who don't necessarily share his views or you know, writing down or posting perfectly normal, sane, balanced, nuanced, logical statements about what's going on in the world, and instead people find reason to criticize him and try to shame him. And Sean never, it's not even about retaliation because that doesn't help. It's just that he never responds, he never acts to protect himself or to defend what he says and what he believes in. And this is what frustrates the hell out of me about Sean Gordon Murphy. He will never, ever, ever defend himself. Even when he's not wrong. Look, I get it. There is strength in being able to walk away from a needless conflict, right? The best fight to have is the one that never happens, right? And there is um, truth in the phrase, you know, discretion is, is the better part of valor and all this stuff. But at the same time, to quote another phrase, if you don't, sorry, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for any and everything. And this is the problem that I have with Sean Gordon Murphy. In my opinion, this is just me, I'm from the first, just me. In my opinion, he's doing this probably in response. In my opinion, it's more likely than not in response to to the accusations Mags made, Mags, Passaggio made against him um, about a week or so ago, maybe maybe two weeks ago, where she accused him of love bombing and, and of being a creeper and, and all this other stuff without actually describing what he did outside of saying that she wanted some of his shine and he promised um, uh, some sort of financial and professional help that she claims he never um, kept his word on someone not keeping their word and someone, you know, sexually harassing you are not the same. But here's the thing. I think this is motivated by that. But here's the problem. If you just leave without addressing what Mag said and what anyone has said, he never addresses it. He either acquiesced, right, or he doesn't address it. He can go to Insta, he can go to Facebook, he can go to whatever social media platform he wants. He could have his own website, he probably does. You could go to any sort of website or social media platform you want. If you are not willing to stand up to people who unfairly, unjustly criticize you, who say untrue things about you, if you don't respond, or worse, if you acquiesce, if you give in to what they say, which he has done at times, for example, the Tess Fowler thing about um, or rather, Tess Fowler's criticisms about him working with um, Doug to Maple. Another person tried to cancel him, right, or try to or try to shame him into no longer working with um, Blake Northcott because apparently she's comics gay. I have no idea who hell Blake Northcott is. Some people have accused Sean himself of being a comics gator, which, to my knowledge, he's not. But here's the thing, people. 
who are so concerned about the boogeyman that is Comicscape, they said if you keep doing things like this to creators like Sean, eventually they'll become Comicscape. How do you think Dan Fratta got into Comicscape? He got tired of being pushed around. Now look, I have issues with at least certain elements of Comicscape, in particular Ethan Van Skyver's uh, offshoot of it, and I've made that very clear. Right, but if somebody wants to be Comicscape, that's their choice. I'm not going to tell them yes or no. Yeah, that's their decision, right? But there's, but my issue with Sean, getting back to the point, my issue with Sean is that he's running away, in my personal opinion, he's just running away. He thinks that, oh, if I just close down my my Twitter account, if I take my assistant and put her in the line of fire, or him, who I don't know what the gender of his assistant is. If I put them in the line of fire to, you know, field all these questions or accusations, I can just be here on Instagram. Except people will just find you and follow you on Insta. And they'll look at your Instagram posts and they'll uh, tweet them, right? You can retweet Instagram posts. You can, you can put Twitter links in Instagram posts. People can make statements. People can make videos, right? It's not as if he's suddenly going to be isolated or, you know, cut off from the um, uh, comics pros, the unprofessional comics pros that keep hassling him. That's not going to stop. That's, that's not going to, to end. They'll just see what you're posting on another platform and they'll just continue to spread more untruths about you. Sean, there has to come a point, man. I don't know if you ever see this video, but if you do, listen to me. There has to come a point when you stop running away. There has to come a point where you stand your ground and you say, hey, I'm working with who I want to work with. I'm making covers for who I want to make covers for. We don't always get along. I don't always agree with that. But for ABC, XYZ reasons, we're working together. Like it, lump it. There has to come a point where you tell people this line and no further. This line and no further. Because if you keep allowing yourself to just be pushed around and just be shoved, guess what? People are just going to shove you. What's the saying is that people will, will, will only treat you the way they allow you, or rather the, the way you allow them to uh, treat you. And I think that's what's happening with Sean here, in my opinion. Going to Insta, going to Facebook, going wherever, is not going to stop people from making baseless accusations about him. And what doesn't stop them is the fact that he never responds to them. He never fights back. He never stands his ground. If you're going to survive in this world, right, online or not, there has to come a point where you need to, to stand your ground. I understand wanting to be peaceable. I understand not wanting to get into need, needless conflict. I understand wanting to be agreeable, right? But there are times when you've, when you've got to, you know, just go, no, no. I didn't do anything wrong. You think I did some, something wrong? You think I wronged you? You think I lied to you? Prove it. There has to come a point where you have to call out your bullies. And that's what these people are. Tess Fowler, Mags, and many other people. That's what they are. They are bullies. Right? They bully in different way, they cry bully and, and they cry being wronged and oppressed or whatever, right? So they're not the big intimidating bully who's who's who is stronger than you and intimidates you that way, but they still bully. And you have to stand up to a bully. You don't necessarily have to fight them, but you do have to stand up to them. You have to show them that, hey, you can't push me around. I'm not going to do what you tell me. I'm not going to, to think what you want me to, to think or share your views all the time. And if you don't do that, right, if you never take a stand, especially when you're not in the wrong, right, there can be times when you, you, you take a stand and you're wrong and you're just being obstinate, right? This isn't that. This isn't taking a stand on something where you were clearly out of line, right? That's just obstinance, and that's not what I'm talking about. 
But when you know that you're right and the other person is wrong or they can't prove you wrong or, you, or, or it's simply a difference of opinion, you don't have to like Doug to Naples. Okay, then just don't buy that comic. For example, I'm not happy with the fact that DNC works with Ethan. I don't like Ethan on a personal level because of crap that he pulled and stuff that he said and did back in January with Nerdette's newsstand. That's me. I'm not going to go to Rich and say, well, how dare you work with Ethan Van Skyver? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not going to buy the product where Ethan's name and, and art is in it. I respect him as an, as an artist, but I don't like him at all as a person. And I can make a decision to, to say, hey, I don't want his work. I don't want to put money in his pocket, so I'm not going to buy it. But I'm not going to tell another artist, right, what to do. That's not my place, right? But as we've seen on Twitter, there are people who think it's their, their place to tell another artist, writer, creator, whatever, who to work with. And in my opinion, if you are the artist, if you are the writer, right, and the reasons that are brought to you why you should or shouldn't be working with this artist all, all boil down to a matter of a person's personal opinion, well then guess what? Personal opinions are like certain body parts where very gross stuff comes out of, right? Everybody's got it. And no one cares. It's 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 refuse. It's useless. Sean, you need to develop a backbone and take a stand. Otherwise, they're just going to push you around and bully you and make false accusations against you on Insta also. And then you'll be leaving Insta and you'll go somewhere else and it'll happen the same thing. You can't keep running away. There has to come a point where you say, no, this is... This is who I am. This is what I make. This is what I do. This is what I believe in. If you have a problem with it, kindly find someone else. But this is who I am. If you like me, you like me. If you hate me, well, that's your problem. Right? As the saying goes, sigh about your damn luck. But anyway, those are my words <laughs> that Sean Gordon Murphy will, will, will probably never come across. But I stand by them. Right? Sean's got to stop running, in my opinion. He can, he, he can go to any social media platform he wants, but if he just keeps running, then guess what? The problem, which is that he allows himself to be bullied and cowed by not-so-good people, that's not going to stop. That type of thing never stops until you stand up to the bully. You can't run from them. They'll just chase you around. But anyway... That's the video. Um, please let me know what you think, and I'll see you all the next one. Have a good day or night. Bye.